I just finished installing my sub which I hung on the wall in my shop. It's connected to my 1977 Kenwood K8100 amp, and a pair of Klipsch R15M bookshelf speakers. It's a good subwoofer for this application, and perhaps it would serve well for a small home theater system. Two important steps if you're going to hang it on the wall, 1. Be sure to tighten all screws before hanging, otherwise you'll end up taking it down to eliminate rattle noise. 2. Buy some rubber shims, see side pick, to install between the legs and the wall to eliminate vibration noise. It will feel tight when you hang it up, but trust me, you're going to need the shims. I did not experience any vibration noise when I had it on the provided stands, but I need it to hang it on the wall. One last consideration, it is designed for 18 gauge wire, but I used 16 gauge which was extremely tight trying to get it into respective speaker receptacles, but I was able to make it happen. It's not a round hole, rather, it's flat and very narrow. Overall the sub is well worth the money. I have the gain set at 1 o'clock and it is providing the bass enhancement I was looking for. Lastly, the cabinet is surprisingly very nice, as it looks like real wood with no obvious seams. I have a Denon DM39 mini stereo that I use in my bedroom. A couple of years back, I added a Yamaha 8 inches subwoofer to give it a little extra oomph. Unfortunately, I had to give it away when I had to move from Minnesota. I still have the same Denon Mini system in my present bedroom, but the lack of room filling base made the system sound a little toyish and too digital sharp. I wanted to purchase the Yamaha again but then I realized it just would not fit anywhere in my bedroom, unless I hung it from the ceiling. Then I saw this model and from the reviews decided to give it a chance. From the dimensions I gathered, this unit would fit the bill. I purchased it with the media bridge cables to match the much larger and sophisticated system in my living room. Installation was easy, but I had to turn the crossover dial a couple of notches to hear anything. I also boosted the gain a couple of notches. Fantastic! Now I'm getting room filling based sound and more instrument separation from my speakers. I was hopping the mahogany would match closer to my furniture, but what the heck. I didn't want to get black unless I was putting it under the couch. So far so good. It'll probably keep the box it came with for about a month in case something goes wrong, but right now I'm totally satisfied. Sounds killer. Especially for Nate. Note, you will have to give it a stereo input with the included Y to use this sub to its fullest capability. Great replacement to my Klipsch which sounded great but was an eyesore. I ended up underhanging beneath my mid-century credenza and it totally fits the look and sounds amazing. I have an Onkyo NR676 receiver, Project Carbon Turntable and Paradigm 7V3 tower speakers I bought used for $170. So my system is nice, but wouldn't call it top of the line. This subwoofer helped with the missing bass frequencies below 45Hz, though it technically only goes to 40Hz. All my music is more transparent now that I can dial back the bass tone and let the sub do the work, taking stress off the towers. The 8 inches sub is tighter and punchier, so great for music that fits that requirement, but had no problem giving oomph to classic hip hop 808 kicks, though hip hop heads W. Oh yeah, gonna buy $240 worth of pudding. It's odd how many people on the review say this is solid wood when it's clear in the photos that it's wrapping. When unpacking I noticed one of the legs came off and seeing as it's particle board it probably did not take that much to strip out the screw. That said it's a very good particle board wrapping and I feel it would hold up longer than most. The sound has a little fluctuations in it that would be hard to nice if you are not looking for it. Playing with the settings it has a hard time above the 70% mark for the gain dial. 
The auto power works much better than the Polk subwoofer I tried. Not sure how good this subwoofer would work in a larger room but it feels good in our 9, 5x9, five 5 feet TV room. It fits nicely under our sofa, 4 to 7 eighths of an inch. I am ordering a replacement, maybe whatever made the lead strip out is also making the little fluctuations. So far this is a great sub, larger than I expected, but makes a nice plant stand also. Fairly heavy and does not have a bottom cover for the sub, so be careful in picking it up. Has hit some seriously low tones without a hiccup, blew my breakers once on the power strip, rolled but fixed that issue. Does pull some power so be mindful to not overload the outlet. This is the perfect addition to my 1962 tube-driven Zenith Hi-Fi. Provides the missing low end and lets the original unit do its job. Great product and looks amazing. I don't usually write reviews unless I truly feel the product deserves it. This subwoofer is a fantastic value that meets my needs aesthetically and has a low profile design that allows it to be placed somewhere that is not an eyesore. Although I don't not consider myself an audiophile, I do greatly appreciate hi-fi sound and for the price this subwoofer definitely delivers. Would highly recommend for medium to small spaces where aesthetics and storage efficiency are important. Nice little sub bit's slim feature makes it very flexible in terms of placement, don't expect same quality as more expensive ones but does the job for my office space. Click link in description for more reviews.